Have you ever wanted to easily make a Glowforge design in Adobe Illustrator? Well, look no further. Today, we're gonna use some basic shapes to make a Nutcracker design here on Chip Builds. So let's jump into it. Okay, so the first thing we need to do to make our Nutcracker door tag is we need to jump inside Adobe Illustrator. And I already have a general preset that I use when I do design for the Glowforge. And if you guys really want, I can share those presets with you. Uh, pretty much, I just have the document size be 11 by 19 inches because that is my kind of max that I can cut out on the Glowforge without using the pass through slot. So I try my best to get these designs to be in that size. That way, even if you have a Glowforge basic, you could still cut this out. So let's jump in. Okay, so now that we're in Adobe Illustrator, you can see I have my canvas here. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is hit Command S and that's just gonna allow us to save our document. I'm gonna save this Nutcracker tag, I guess. And then uh, before I even worry about the tag, I'm going to work on our Nutcracker. It's gonna be a very basic Nutcracker. And so what I'm gonna do for right now is I'm just gonna kind of make a rectangle. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna get rid of the fill for right now, just so I can kind of see uh, kind of what I'm doing. And so what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna make the little kind of crown that our Nutcracker is gonna wear. And this is gonna be kind of like that main bit of it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back to the shape tool and I'm gonna hold down and I'm gonna get the star tool. So I'm gonna click and drag. So you can see we have a full star and that's not what we want. So I'm gonna use the down arrows on my keyboard to get it down to just one point. And then now we have a triangle and I, I wanna have three of these. So we're just gonna kind of shrink this down a little bit. I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit and I want this not to be kind of this shape. I'm gonna just play with these. I kind of want them short and stubby. Maybe not that stubby, like right there. I'm thinking that's looking pretty good. And so that looks pretty good to me. And then I'm just gonna click and hold option and drag with my mouse. And that will give us a copy. If we hold shift, it will lock it into place just like so. I'm gonna repeat that action. And then you can see we didn't quite get it right. So you can do one of two things. You can either stretch this out a little bit to match it, or you can adjust this bottom shape to match it as well. So now the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna come back to our shapes panel and we're gonna get another little rectangle. This one's gonna be a lot thinner and I'm thinking that's gonna be okay. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna group these top shapes, hit Command G, get this all in one group and then you're gonna select everything and you can also hit Command A or Control A and that will select it all. And I'm gonna just align it all to the center. So now we need to combine all of these separate shapes into one shape and we can do that one of two ways. We can either use the Shape Builder tool or we can use the Pathfinder tools. So if you wanna use the Pathfinder tools, all you have to do is select everything and click Unite. And then now that has given us our kind of crown shape. Uh, or you can undo that and you can use the shape builder tool. But before we do that, I do want to come in here and still adjust a couple things. I don't think it quite looks right. I think that's a little too fat. And I think I'm going to make this just a little bit bigger. Maybe like right there. And then let's just bring this up to the, align it to the bottom of this. Okay, so now I'm going to select everything and just align it one more time just to make sure. And then now I'm going to click it all. And I'm gonna come over here to the Shape Builder tool. And then now we're just gonna combine all these shapes into one. So now we have our crown shape and we can kind of adjust it with our points later. But if you wanna do any kind of uh, real editing, I would suggest saving a copy off to the side before you unite all the shapes into one shape. So the next part of our Nutcracker that we're gonna make is we're gonna make his face. And again, this is gonna be pretty much solely built just on basic shapes. So I'm gonna come and grab my rectangle tool and I am just gonna kind of make, I kind of want a longer face maybe. And then, so that's gonna be his face. Obviously it's a little too thin. And so what we can do is we can adjust the side here. And I think what I want to do, I want his face to pretty much come right up close to the end of his little crown here. So I'm gonna just kind of pull this out a little bit. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna align it so once you've aligned the different shapes, you can unite it at this point and have a very basic shape. But I wanna do a little bit of shaping. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit A on my keyboard for the direct selection tool, or you can come up here to the top right. And I'm gonna click this bottom left point. 
and I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna use my arrows on the keyboard and just come in a little bit. So you can either count or just kind of eyeball it. So I'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That might be a little much. And I'm gonna come to this side and do the same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And so now let's see what that looks like. And so now you can see we've just added a little bit more depth to our character here. I think I wanna do a little bit more cause I think I want his face to be a little more slender. And so for this, I might just come up here and edit this path. That's a little too much, so let's bring it back out. So I'm thinking that's looking pretty good, and then maybe just bring it up a little bit. So let's add some color into here just so that we can kind of start to hopefully see uh, what this might look like. We got to get a gold up in here. Let's get more of a goldy color. And then his face, I don't know. What color should we make his face? Is, is there like a peach? Whoa, he is definitely not a carrot man. Let's do this color. Okay, so here's our little guy so far. I think I'm still not super happy with his face. So I'm gonna make it just a little bit shorter and just a little bit longer. And I think what we're gonna do too is bring in these sides a little bit more. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so this is kind of where we're at with our dude. So the next thing we want to do is I want to make his little kind of shoulder pads and body. And so we're going to, you guessed it, use another rectangle. Now, one thing we do have to remember too, this isn't going to be a fully designed uh, nutcracker because it is going to go on a door hanging tag. So we don't really have to build the whole thing out and kind of always keep in mind the final shape of your project. So if you're going to put this on a door round or just a round sign, then you kind of got to think of that shaping of how those curves are going to crop out. Or even if you're doing like a square sign or a hexagon, something. So you got to always keep that in the back of your mind when you're designing. So let's give him a different color. I want to give him like a blue. Maybe, yeah, we'll give him like a little blue thing. And again, we are gonna just align everything so that it's staying in shape. I'm gonna bring his face out to the front because his face is gonna go over his coat. So we're gonna come, right click and come to arrange and click bring to front. And then now we can kind of just move this piece up and down a little bit to see how far we want his face to cover it. And so I think that's where we're gonna cover that. And so I am going to use a direct selection tool again here to change the bottom shape of this. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so I like how it's kind of tapered a little bit there. And let's make this a little bit longer. Just I'm not sure how big he's actually going to set on the door tag but so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make like kind of little epaulets for him so I'm gonna put a little rectangle here and let's make it the same gold as his hat I guess and the cool thing what we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom in and you can see we have these dots if you kind of hover in the corner here and what that's gonna do is if you click and drag it will round your shape off so now we don't want to do the whole thing well at least I don't want to do the whole thing so I'm gonna hit my direct selection tool so I hit a again I'm gonna click that one point and I'm gonna hold shift and click this other side. That way I'm only changing half of the points. So now we can curve these uh, to as far as we want. And I think, I don't think I quite want it a complete circle, but I want it pretty close. So I think 0 0.2 inches is looking pretty good. And so now let's bring this over to his little shirt here. I think I wanna make this just a little bit chunkier and then bring it in just a little bit, just like that. And so I think that looks good. So I'm gonna hold option and click and drag again, and then right click and click transform and hit reflect. And then we can click okay. And so now we have the second part. And then so now we can just kind of figure out the spacing. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click this one and click this one. And then I'm gonna hit command G to group them. And then what I'm gonna do is select these back two shapes and then I'm gonna align them. That way it's equal spacing. And so once that's done, I'm going to select those two and group them again. And then I'm going to align everything else. And then what we can do is we can go arrange and send these back to the back. And then I'm going to ungroup the back piece from the applets. And so now you can see our little Nutcracker Man is starting to take shape. So now the next thing our Nutcracker needs is some gold plated buttons for his coat. And well, it could be black buttons or gold. I'm not sure exactly what color they're gonna be yet, but so let's add those now. 
So we're gonna come back over here to the shapes as well and get our ellipse tool, hold and click shift so that we have the correct constraints. And so let's just make these black for right now. And obviously this circle is way too big. So I'm gonna just hold, I'm gonna bring this down a little bit, maybe to about right there. I'm gonna click option or alt and click and drag holding shift. And then now we have one set of buttons. I'm gonna select both of them and do that same thing. And I'm just gonna eyeball these spaces. I'm gonna select all of these and then hit command group. And so now they're a group. So if I move them, you know, they're all gonna to move together. All right, so now that his clothes are done, we are gonna work on the Nutcracker's kind of crazy looking hair. Now, there's so many different hairs that you can do for a Nutcracker. I think I'm gonna just try and do like a little swooshy thing. And for that, we're actually gonna use the pen tool. We're not gonna use the shapes, even though you can use like a circle and a triangle and kind of combine those to make a very similar thing. So actually what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the curve pen tool and we're gonna come over here. And we're gonna make some curves. So I like this tool a lot when I need to make a very organic curved shape. And now you can see we have kind of a crazy type looking thing. And so we can just come in here and adjust these points. So if I want to make this bigger or smaller. And so sometimes it helps to zoom in and it's really just about personal preference, how you want it to ultimately look like. So I think that's looking okay for what I want. So let's see, let's send this to the back. So do a range, send to back, so that we can kind of get the angles that we want right. I think that is looking good. Let's make it maybe a little bit smaller because I want to put a couple in here. Let's pull him out a little bit and then let's do maybe a bit of a lighter gray. And then, so I'm gonna hold option again. Let's see, can we do three of them? Or is three too much? Three might be too much. What do we think? I actually like three. And if, if you really wanna make them all, you know, the same distancing, you can come up here to your line panel and do the vertical distribution. So I like how that is. And so I'm gonna select these, get our shape builder tool. And then I am just gonna select all these crazy shapes and then they're gonna become one. And then so what I can do is then I can grab this and hold option and make another, and then go back to transform, reflect, and hit okay. And then now we have our same thing. And look at that, now we have our Nutcracker's crazy hair. Okay, so now the next part for us to make is his face. And for this part of the design process, my intern Elsa decided that she needed to oversee the project to make sure that we are doing a good job and doing this nutcracker justice. So I think for the eyes, what I'm gonna do is I am just going to take a circle and it doesn't matter really the size right now, I'm gonna switch it to a stroke and I'm gonna just beef up the stroke until I find a nice thickness that I want. Let's do 16. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit A for the direct selection tool. I'm gonna click this bottom point and then I'm gonna hit delete. And so now we are stuck with this uh, half circle here. And, and this shape is gonna be our eyes. I don't really wanna go through all the details of creating like crazy eyes. So I'm just gonna have it be like his eyes are closed. So what we're gonna do is I don't like how the edges of this is flat. So I'm gonna select this and we're gonna go to our stroke options. And if you don't have the option, just come up here to the top of window and then you can click on the stroke panel. So what I'm gonna do is over here where it says cap, I'm going to click round cap and now you can see it has rounded out our shape. So this is fine for me. So I'm going to click it and then I'm going to come up to object and I'm going to click expand. I'm going to click OK and now our path has changed into an actual shape and now this is something that we can cut out on the laser. So now all we got to do is make it the correct size since obviously his eyeball will not be that big. And so I'm just gonna hold shift to scale it down. And you can obviously, uh, don't have to keep it constrained, but I'm going to keep it constrained for this video. Then I'm gonna hold option and just make another copy. I'm gonna group these together so that if I move one, they both move together. Okay, and then let's make these black. Okay, so I think that's a pretty good size for our eyes. We can always come back and adjust it later. 
So now let's make his little rosy cheeks. Again, just getting the ellipse tool to make a circle. Let's make these red. And these don't need to be, you know, too crazy big either. Maybe 0.55 look, looks pretty good. And so they're just his cheeks. Again, I'm gonna hold option and drag and make our copy. And then I'm gonna keep these grouped together, Command G. So now let's make him some kind of mustache and teeth. Something just to really give it that traditional nutcracker look. And so let's start with the mouth for now. So again, we are gonna go to our shape panel, which is what our favorite thing is for this video. I'm gonna make some kind of rectangle. Uh, let's make it black for now. And then I'm gonna bring it, let's see, maybe about right here. And I think I'm gonna make it just a little wider. There we go. Okay, so this is our mouth so far. So for this project, I don't want the teeth to be too high or anything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add score lines to this file and then that way I can just paint parts of this white and part of it black. So the top half is going to be black for if when you're opening a nutcracker to actually put a nut in there, you kind of see the black and then the bottom part will be the white teeth. And so I'm going to give them maybe like two or three teeth on the bottom and for that I'm just going to use the uh, line tool or the pen tool and so for this part I am going to switch the fill to a stroke just so we can see what we're doing a little bit better. So let's click on this shape and I'm going to come over here and just swap these arrows. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this line segment tool and I'm going to come over here. Let's zoom in a little bit and I'm going to find where the middle is. So the middle is this intersect point. I'm going to click and hold shift so it's constrained and get right to the other side. And then now we are going to do two more lines for the teeth. I don't know. Just kind of pick doesn't super matter and then I'm gonna do the option slash alt click and drag and so what I'm gonna do is gonna select these two and group them and then I'm going to align these ones so let's align these again and that looks pretty right to me so now that we have the spacing correct, I am right now in the moment, I'm going to switch these lines to my score line color just so that I don't forget that I want those to be scored. Okay, so now that our mouth is done, let's move on to his mustache. So for his mustache, I am going to use the curvature pen tool again. And again, I'm just going to kind of eyeball it here. This I want it to be a little more pronounced. I'm gonna just move it over to the side so we can actually see what we're doing. So the nice thing about making the mustache is all you have to do is get one side of it to completely to how you like it and then you can just mirror and then you'll have a perfect mustache. So I'm not super loving this sloppy shape that I made. I still got some work to do with the uh, curved pen tool here. And so I'm just gonna play with this a little bit. Move these handles about. I think that's looking pretty good to me. So I am going to just make another copy. I'm gonna right click, transform, and then reflect. And then I'm just gonna drag this out to they are touching. So I'm just gonna kind of move this together a little bit to where I like it. And I think that's looking pretty good. And then so let's just select both of them and click the Unite option in the Pathfinder set. Let's make this black and you can hit X on the keyboard to toggle between the stroke color and the fill color. And so I want the mustache to be black and then now we can come bring it in place. Obviously, we don't want it to be too crazy huge. And let's give it a little bit of room. I want there to be a little bit of gap between the mouth and the mustache as well. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise the eyes up just a little bit. Maybe it's like right there. And then let's bring up these little rosy cheeks a little bit, just like so. Actually, I'm gonna ungroup the little rosy cheeks and I'm gonna actually move them in just a smidge. So our nutcracker is pretty much done. Only thing left we have to do is add our tag to this and then get this into a file that the Glowforge will actually cut out. Um, so I'm just gonna do a couple minor tweaking, just aligning some stuff. Uh, and then I wanna make his torso, I think, come in even a little bit more to give it, make him kind of look more a little bit like a toy soldier as well. 
Uh, obviously, nutcrackers come in so many different styles and you can really make this project to like literally whatever style you want. I hope this has helped uh, kind of get some skills going, some basic skills so that you can build your own files. But so I'm just gonna do some more tweaking and then I'll show you how I color code things for the Glowforge. Okay, so now we need to make our tag and it's super simple, it's just a rectangle. So as you can see, this is what we've got so far. And so I am going to draw a rectangle over here. So we drew a rectangle and what we're gonna actually do is add two more points into that shape. And so I'm gonna hit my P for pen tool and I'm going to put a point right here. And then I'm going to put a point right here. And so now we're just going to move those points equally across the board. And so you can have the angle of the top of the tag be whatever looks the best to you. And then for the tag hole, we're just going to do the ellipse tool. And then we will align both of these. And then now you have your tag and that's how you make a little tag. So now I want to make this for the size of the Glowforge and what I'm going to do is move a couple of these things around so that we can get into it. So I'm going to put our Nutcracker off to the side. I'm actually going to select our whole tag and then I'm going to come up to transform and I want, I want the height of it to be 19 inches. So make sure you do have these dimensions constrained and let's hit enter. And so now that is going to be the size of our door tag. But I'm actually going to switch it to 18 inches just because I feel like 19 inches is like an inch too tall. So there we go. So now we have it to 19 inches. And as you can see here, our outline of our tag is red. And for me, when I make these files for the Glowforge to cut, I make all the cut lines red. I make all the score lines blue and I make engraving either green or black. I kind of interchange those two. I don't know why, but that is how I do it. As long as all your different steps have different colors, you should be pretty much okay when importing your file into the Glowforge interface in their web app. So we do have this little separate piece here, which will go on top of the tag to give it some dimension. And uh, that is just two ellipses centered to each other. But so this is our tag that we're gonna cut out and that's what's gonna hang on the door. So now what we need to do is we need to size our nutcracker to the correct size. For just for this, I'm gonna switch this outline to a fill so we can see what we're working with. I'm gonna send it to the back. And then now we can size our uh, nutcracker accordingly. So I'm gonna just kind of put him as far to the bottom and to the left as possible. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just scale it up and hold shift so that it stays constrained. Now what I'm going to do with the all selected, I am going to hit group. That way I can align these two things together and then I'm going to ungroup it. So let's hit command G and now we can select our two things, align them into the center. They're already pretty well centered. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy of our nutcracker. I'm going to hold option and click and drag. And that can be the nutcracker that we work with. And now I'm going to switch the tag back to my stroke color just so that I don't forget later. And now what we want to do is we want to make a score line for our nutcracker to actually glue the parts onto. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ungroup our nutcracker and I'm going to delete all these little extra bits that we just don't need. And then what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna select all of these and I'm gonna click Unite. And then now what I'm gonna do is I, with our base selected that we've combined that whole shape, I'm gonna come to Object, I'm gonna come to Path and I'm gonna come to Offset Path. And I'm gonna go minus 0.01. I'm gonna hit Enter. And I'm gonna hit Command C for copy. I'm gonna hit delete. I'm gonna delete this back layer. And I'm gonna come up here to edit and edit paste in place. And then I can switch this to a blue color for the stroke. And then we want no fill color. And now we have the perfect placement for where we need to glue our nutcracker onto our tag. So now that we have the tag and the score line for the tag completed, now we need to get our parts of the nutcracker sorted out. So this is going to be a 3D layered piece. And so we need to do a little bit of trimming and shape building. 
So I'm going to select this all again and I'm going to make another copy and I'm going to do that same thing where I'm deleting all these extra little bits that we just don't need. And then I'm going to select all of them and then use the shape builder tool and you know, just make this all one shape. Oops, I missed a couple. Let's do this again. And then over here as well. So now we have our base shape and I'm going to make this a red stroke. So, cause we know that it's a cut. And then, so now we have that piece sorted. So the thing that we kind of have to do is we have to think of this as like a puzzle because some of the shapes are a little funky and they're hidden behind each other. And so we're going to have to cut those different pieces out to make sure that they fit properly. So for this next part, what I'm going to do, I'm going to select the hair. I'm going to select the crown and I'm going to select his face and I'm going to make a copy. So I'm going to select these and then I'm going to come to our shape builder tool. And as you can see, when I'm hovering over it, there's a plus. If I hold the option or alt button, that will let me cut different parts away. And so I can cut this part away, I can cut this part away, and I can cut that part away. And so now we can do the same thing with the crowns. I'll come back to my shape builder tool, which is the shortcut for it is shift and M, but I don't want to do that because that's just an extra thing to remember. So let's do this. And again, I'm going to hold option. And I want to get rid of that one. I want to get rid of that. And I want to get rid of that piece. And so now we have our two pieces of our hair that we can glue on top to that base layer and nothing is going to get in the way. And so now we can take these. Let's switch it to a red stroke because we are also going to cut these out. Now for the face layer and the crown layer, we don't have to do any cutting out because they're their own separate things and they don't uh, interfere with any other shapes. So I'm just going to click and drag these ones and make a copy and just use the eyedropper to pick the same stroke color for the cuts. And so the same thing with his little eplis that we made for his coat. I'm just gonna click and drag a copy and do the same thing, eyedropper tool and make it the same stroke color outline as these other pieces that we need to cut out. And the same thing goes for these buttons as well. So one thing I didn't think about for his face was how I want some of the features on his face to be sunk in and some of them to be on top. So his little rosy cheeks are gonna actually be the same part as the face uh, shape. And so I prematurely took that shape out already. So luckily we still have our original working copy and I can just fix that. But for that one, I'm gonna have the mouth and I'm gonna have his cheeks and maybe even his eyes be all the same level and then have his mustache sitting on top. We can either have the eyes sitting on top as well or have them be the same layer. I think we're gonna have them be the same layer and the only thing the 3D on that layer will be his mustache, I think. So let's just pull the mustache out, do that same thing, eye dropper tool, and we got our little mustache going. And so I'm gonna select all these little bits of his face. I'm gonna hit option and make a copy. So what I'm gonna do right off the bat is I'm gonna make his face shape the correct uh, color. So let's get rid of that fill. So I know that's gonna be a cut. I'm gonna switch his mouth to the same thing, use the eyedropper tool. And so now I know that this mouth is gonna cut out and it's gonna score his teeth lines. And I think that will be okay. And then, so the next thing we're gonna do with his cheeks and his eyes, we're just gonna do the same thing. We are gonna select them and make them that same cut layer. And then now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all of this and group it. And then now that will all be the same layer and I can paint it, but they'll fit back into their slots correctly. He kind of looks like a little robot without all his coloring. So we have all the different pieces we need. Uh, currently I have the backer plate for his body to be just the one layer, but I can also make it be where, uh, you know, it's the epaulets are raised a little bit more than they are. And if we do that, we just need to uh, knock the face out of this back. But I don't know if I super want to do that or not. Okay, so now you can see we have everything separated and we have it all color coded. And for this one, there's no engraves actually. So it's all just cut lines. Again, the red is the cut line for me and any kind of scoring line is blue. And so that looks good to me. And so what I can do now is I can go file and I can save 
a copy and I'm gonna save this as a PDF. So if I save it as a PDF and import it into Glowforge, I know for sure it's gonna be the correct sizing. It's not gonna change. Uh, most people do do a SVG file and you can change some settings in Adobe Illustrator to make it import into Glowforge at the correct scaling, but I just find it quicker, you know, to do the PDF option. So I'm gonna have this be Nutcracker tag, click PDF and then click save, click save PDF. So now we can upload our PDF into the Glowforge interface and we can just click this upload button. We can locate the file where we saved it, click open, and then we can see all the different parts of our PDF being in here. And as you can see, because we've color coded it correctly, we can come over here. We can see that these are gonna be our score lines. So we can click those to score and all of this is gonna be our cut settings. Uh, this file will be available on Etsy and Patreon and design bundles and all those things. I'll put the link down below. But you guys, I hope this helped um, just a little bit kind of inspire you to hopefully start making some designs in Adobe Illustrator. It's really not that hard and intimidating as it tends to be. And if you don't want to pay the money for Illustrator, then there's a great alternative that's free called Inkscape, which is very similar. There's some great people on YouTube that have Inkscape tutorials and you can pretty much make the same exact design in Inkscape. So let me know down below if you guys have any comments or questions or if you make one of these or design one of these yourself, I would love to know. So thanks for watching guys and catch the next one for when we actually cut this out and paint it. So see ya.